<clears throat> well, praise the Lord. We are here again. We are here again. <laughs> we are together again. Praising the Lord. We are together again. In one accord. Something good is already happening. Something greater is in store. We are together again. <laughs> Praising the Lord. <coughs> That's not a very fantastic worship leader. <laughs> uh, let's um, let's allow some more people to join us. If you have a friend, you want to be part of this, can you link your friend to this video? Or if you don't mind, please put this on your wall so that your friends can benefit from this. This is going to be fantastic. <coughs> going to be another wonderful time by the grace of God. It's a wonderful topic we are going to look at. Who is kissing you? <laughs> Who is kissing you? Okay. Yeah, welcome Esther, welcome. Can you invite your friends? Invite your friends to join us. It should be a very interesting topic for everyone, <laughs> especially those who are all excited about getting married or finding Mr. Right or Miss Right. It's good to join this program because of the important things we are going to look at we're going to look at some very important stuff All right hallelujah Wonderful. Servant of God, thank you for joining us. Thank you. We appreciate your partnership. We appreciate your encouragement. The Lord bless you. To be I, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy to to visit your church when I'm in Nigeria. <laughs> uh, come and be a blessing to your church. Okay. <clears throat> Please join me and let's believe God together. I'd like us to believe God to speak to us. Expressly. 
without any form of confusion, without any hindrance, let the word of God come through. Let the Lord speak to us like never before. Hallelujah. 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 Let's join faith together and just uh, commit this to the Lord. Father, we ask that this will be an unusual moment. Let this be a time where you speak to your children expressly. Lord, we ask that you will cause there to be understanding. Let there be revelation of your own word that it will put us over even in these difficult times. The entrance of your word gives light. Let it give us understanding that will not just be hearers but will be doers of your word. Thank you, Father, for those who are already joining us and those who will. Lord, I ask that you will use this to speak to them. Clear every doubt, every confusion. Let every deception be replaced with truth. For your word says, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Let there be freedom from bondage freedom from deceit and deception and that we'll be free to serve you with all our life all our spirit soul and body thank you lord for hearing us in jesus name we pray amen and amen something very interesting here um just want to read you some Bible passages and you will see something that is common then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted his voice and wept <laughs> that's from the Bible you know and then in the New Testament he says here Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace be to you all who are in Christ. Okay. Still from the New Testament. So he got up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And then we go right back to the Old Testament. He kissed all his brothers and wept on them. And afterwards, his brothers talked with him. That's talking about Joseph, whom the brothers sold. And if we check in Second Samuel verse, I mean chapter 14, verse 33. So when Jacob came to the king and told him, he called for Absalom. Thus he came to the king and prostrated himself on his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. First Samuel chapter 10 verse 1. Then Samuel took the flask of oil, poured it on his head, kissed him, and said, Has not the, the Lord anointed you a ruler over his inheritance? 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 18 Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel all the knees that have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that had, has not kissed him. So you see kissing has to do with some level of um, emotion some expression of feelings could be to someone 
could be to for those who worship who worship some idols you see the the keys the idols like the one we just read it said there are people who have never kissed Baal up to 7,000 when the, the prophet Elijah felt he was the only one that is left who was serving God and who did not compromise. God had to tell him, I still have some folks here. There are still people here who have not gone that route. Praise God. So, we now know that there are they are, you know, there's uh, there's not only one kind of kissing, but now we are going to zero it down. <coughs> Excuse me. We just want to focus on securing a lasting relationship with the topic: Who is kissing you? Who is kissing you? You know, the moment you mention the word kiss, some people will just jump. <laughs> because the mind tends to go to only one direction. And um, some people don't attach any importance to it, especially nowadays. Um, it's easy, it's, it's common. That's why I wrote what I wrote. It's not really a big deal, you know, to have someone or to kiss just anyone. It's not a big deal for some people. Having a kiss from anyone is not a big deal. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be an expression of affection. It's supposed to be an expression of um, closeness. But you see, <clears throat> the society is so charged up that, I mean, people are so shallow in that um, the, they do the things they do not because they want to do it for many people. They do the things they do not because they want to do it, but because the sentiments are whipped up and uh, the media is really helping us make sure people do what they want the people to do for example an advert will say if you're thirsty drink a particular drink now they are programming you so that when you are thirsty without thinking without your logical reasoning you will just go the direction that they have suggested to you. Even the educational system, the government uses that as well. The government programs your mind to think in a particular direction. So the school system prepares you to think in a particular direction. And so many people don't bother to find out, is there any alternative? And uh, in even in the present day, a kiss shouldn't just be, I mean, I'm talking about an intimate kiss. There is a kiss that is for an acquaintance. There is a kiss. In some places, a kiss is just a normal greeting. And so they give you kiss on your cheeks. But the one I'm talking about here is the intimate kiss. The intimate close keys that shows there's something deeper than what is happening. And for many people who are not married, they forget about, they'll just forget about whatever anybody is thinking and just do what they want to do. But what is that doing to you? How is that helping you? How is that enhancing your, your relationship with God? Oh, I'm so honored. Thank you very much, Pastor, for joining us. Pastor Joe, the Lord bless you, sir. So happy to see you. 
Yes. So if you are talking about um, securing a lasting relationship, your keys shouldn't be that cheap. So you should be the one who decides whether it's a big deal or not. And it should be something big to you. It should be something big to you. He don't go about kissing everybody. You know, <laughs> I mean, the image I put there, that is a baby. So that's understood. Kissing this wonderful uh, puppy. That is understood. Since, well, since the parents allowed that to happen, it's understood. Maybe they were busy somewhere else and the baby just <laughs> wanted a kiss from the dog. <laughs> is now so we should actually say we should ask it as a question is having a kiss from anyone a big deal to you you are the one that is supposed to tell us oh it's not a big deal or so we were just making that announcement to capture people's attention now let me make a point before we continue and that point is the person that is expressing love towards you has more influence on you than you that is just responding. I take that again. The person you love does not influence you like the person who loves you. That is not just um, philosophy or psychology, but it's the truth. You know what? Because when you are now very conscious that this person really, truly cares about me, it influences the things you do much more than the person that you care about. And that's why in reality, it should be both the man and the woman who are care they care about each other that should come together for a lasting relationship now i will emphasize the god factor is so important don't depend on your own human understanding don't depend on your own um, intellectual uh, capability. See, marriage was not started by any tradition. Marriage is God's idea. So it's not man who started marriage. It is God. It's God's thing. However, there are different kinds of marriages, but I will only put them into just two groups. One is the godly marriage, and the other one is the rest to put together. <laughs> so, godly marriage demands that you, that desires for a godly marriage, you should be ready to bring yourself or to submit yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That is very crucial because you cannot live like a non-believer in God and yet you want the believer's marriage. How will that ever happen? You want a believer's marriage but you live completely with total disregard or partial regard for God's ways of doing things. So who is going to do that magic? Who is going to bring it to bear? Who is going to cause it to happen in your marriage? It will take you allowing God to walk through you to be able to establish God's kind of marriage. So if you are so liberal that you don't know what is intimate and what is supposed to be kept secret, 
what is supposed to be private. I mean, you can discuss any kind of thing with anybody. See, even in the secular world, regular day-to-day -day living, there are things called, there are some information that are called classified information. They are things you don't do in public. Even though today some people say, oh, it's, a, I mean, it's, it's a freedom of choice. So you can do anything you feel like doing. I stumbled on one one um, information today, uh, I think it was on social media, where a woman set fire on the husband because the husband violated the step, I mean, her own daughter, that, that is the man's stepdaughter, seven-year-old child. Why would people do that? Okay, if he, if he was so pressed, he wanted to sleep with a woman. There are people who are doing it as a profession, who don't care whatever you want to do. Why must you go and violate a child? Why must you humiliate a child? Because of your own animalistic desire. See, that is what ungodliness can do. There are some people who don't understand the Bible. But their upbringing, their upbringing has influenced them that they want something decent. But there are some people who, because of whatever they have exposed themselves to, the kind of friends they keep, the language they speak, they have gone off tangent. And who is to blame? And then one day they just feel like, I want to start a family. And guess what? They want a godly marriage. But they are not able to severe themselves from that habit. One of the ways I want to suggest to you is to make up your mind. If you want a godly marriage, don't allow it to be a force nobody should force it on you no and to, to be honest with you marriage as far as i'm concerned is more of a free enterprise <laughs> that it, you should understand it that way so that your spouse will be happy to sleep in the same house the same room with you not because he or she is forced but because that's where he or she wants to sleep that's whom he or she wants to sleep with gladly not because you are coercing not because you are trying to make it happen you are forcing things to happen no that one doesn't last as a matter of fact why many religious marriages are boring is that they are meant to be you know, they are done out of obligation religious obligation obligation kills marriage religion kills marriage when i say religion i'm talking about man's way of trying to impress god hoping that God will put up with him or her. You know, so you come up with your own best idea. And many of these people don't want to study the Bible. They don't want to understand what God wants. They want to come up with what they call good ideas and then submit that to God and hope that God will put up with them. No. You know, for the the few years I've been on, uh, uh, been running radio program, TV program. Many people ask you the question so that they they are just doing this. They want you to say what they want to hear, so that you will be like a rubber stamp <laughs> on what they have already made up their minds to do. <laughs> so they will ask you a question and want to test you or get you to agree with their own way of getting it done 
They don't want to know. They are not asking to find out what does God require of me? What does God want me to do? Now I'm taking time to say all this because of one thing. If kissing just anyone is not a big deal to you, then you will be ready to put up with anyone as well. Now, apart from the other different kinds of kissing, which we have read different Bible passages, we've read of a father kissing the son, that's the popular prodigal son story, you know. When he came back, Bible says the father kissed him. You wouldn't think it's not this kind of kiss. No, it's not this kind of kiss. That's the, the greeting, the general greeting that they have in that culture. There's a, a, a kiss that someone had to kiss the feet of Jesus. That's not the one we mean. And, I mean, out here we meet with different cultural backgrounds. And there are some people, for the first time somebody greeted me that way, I was so shocked. But I just had to behave and accommodate my shock. You know, somebody sees you for the first time out of excitement, just gives you a peck on both cheeks and has no nothing attached to it. That is their way of greeting. <laughs> and I wasn't used to that. So when you see a young person or you who wants to have a lasting marriage or you want a lasting relationship, the first thing you do is get involved with stirring up your sexual passion. You, your hormones will be too charged. You will be so overcharged sexually that your reasoning will not be able to function anymore. Your hormones will be too loud. You can't think. How do I know that? Because I'm a human being. I am a human being. Yes. So, if you are into, um, you know, some people take it so far that they are confused and they try to get everybody else that cares about them to be as confused as they are and agree that what they are doing is right. And then was he, here is what they say. What, what about paper? The certificate, marriage certificate is just a paper. Then do it. If it's just a paper, then go that far. Respect it because it shows commitment. The moment you start the kissing and having deep kissing and all that, you, the next thing is you will be feeling like you are hanging. And if you are talking about something that will help you to stay in a lasting relationship, sex is the last thing to come. Kissing, in that sense should come after you have signed that agreement. You have entered into the covenant relationship. Your lips should be so, so special that you only kiss the lips of your own spouse. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life, but I'm telling you what works. I'm sharing with you what works and what will work if you allow it to work in you. So it's not about, uh, don't mind all these pastors, they like telling people what to do. No, I'm just sharing with you things that will help you. Now, let us um, let me read uh, for you from uh, Genesis chapter 29. This will make a beautiful read. Genesis chapter 29 is this wonderful story about Jacob who ended up marrying two sisters. Well, let's see from verse 1. Genesis 29 from verse 1. Then Jacob continued on his journey and came to the land of the eastern peoples. There he saw a well in the open country with three flocks of sheep lying near it because the flocks were watered from that well. The stone over the mouth of the well was large. Then all the flocks were gathered there, the sheep 
would roll, I mean the shepherds would roll the stones away from the, wa the well's mouth and water the sheep. Excuse me. Then they would return the stone to its place over the mouth of the well. Jacob asked the shepherd, my brothers, wh where are you from? We are from Haran, they replied. He said to them, do you know Laban, Nahor's grandson? Yes, we know him, they answered. Then Jacob asked them, is he well? Yes, he is, they said. And there comes his daughter Rachel with the sheep. Look, he said, the sun is still high. It is not time for the flock to be gathered. Water the sheep and take them back to pasture. We can't, they reply, until all the flocks are gathered and the stone has been rolled away from the mouth of the well. Then we will water the sheep. While he was still talking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherd. So you see, uh, not only men were shepherds, you also had women shepherds. When Jacob saw Rachel, daughter of his uncle Laban, and Laban's sheep, he went over and rolled a stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep. The, he, wasn't, he wasn't even very sure, but just hearing that his relative owned that, he started serving. Then Jacob kissed Rachel. So they must have had a time of chatting Jacob kissed Rachel and began to weep aloud. Now we don't know whether, but I would want to believe that this kiss was the greeting kind of kiss. It wasn't that of intimacy because that will not be real. It only happens in the Hollywood. <laughs> they would just see somebody within five minutes. The next thing is the person will start kissing deeply so intimately and you just wonder does it ever happen like this in real life i mean especially in these times where you don't know what sickness the person is suffering from you just see somebody and because you admire the person oh you're already falling in love five minutes you have started sleeping with the person carrying the person on your laps what a crazy world and the, the sad thing is that people believe those things well let's go um a bit further from verse 31 when the lord saw that leah was not i had to jump uh, the whole story but it will be interesting for you to read the whole account but i want us to see something a man may not have any difficulty getting to sleep with a woman that he does not really love from verse 31, when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, what does that say to you? What does it say to you? <laughs> uh, but Rachel remained childless. When the Lord saw, he enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. Verse 32, Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him. Now, I want you to see the where this thing was going. She named him Reuben. For she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. Meaning, a man can love, can marry a woman that he does not love. And Jacob had a case. In his own case, this woman was literally imposed on him that wasn't his choice his choice was rachel that's why bible clearly says that that he, he did not love her doesn't mean she didn't sleep with her he did not sleep with her you know the, the confusion that the the devil is using all kinds of ways to confuse young people's mind 
get people to believe that if you really love the person in fact to show that you really love the person you must sleep with her whether she likes it or not whether she loves you or not you must sleep with her to prove love or even girls have bought into that a man has to sleep with you whether you know him or not for you to show him love that is not love that is lost that is confusion people have bought into all these ways of you know uh starting a relationship how can you start a, a relationship you want to last and the only thing you have in mind is sex how and somebody says mm, well you see you need to know uh how it will be functioning they just shall live by faith that's why if you want if you want a godly marriage you need to be a lover of god this is how it works you need to be genuinely committed to serving god he does not disappoint he does not i did not have many psychology books to read before i got married to my wife no we did not know anything else than the bible and what he said we were just enjoying serving god and when the time came and we were ready to marry god settled us we served in the church where we were we were always excited about being involved with evangelism involved with missions you know we'll go to some other town our pastor then will send us the the church uh, administrators will send us for missions you cross the sea i remember when we had to plant the young church in another local government we had to be crossing the sea you know take the the boat and many times we had our lives in danger but we didn't care because we were serving god we did not care at at all we just con in fact after we got married we continued from where we stopped as single people see this idea of wanting to do things your own way is babylonian is luciferian spirit you know what the luciferian spirit does tells you you want to marry don't stay in church after you marry you come back to church that is a lie that the devil has sold to many believers many christians many church goers and so you see people begin to have complications have problems with their pastor they cannot trust their leaders in church anymore the moment some people want to get married they don't even want the church to get involved but they want to come back to wait in the church because they have been deceived some say if i don't if i don't sleep with this guy he will not marry me why do you think that that is the person you ought to marry when you have not gotten god's approval the way you ought to you need to know is that you will have the peace of god within you and if god has given to you what is it that a man has that he has not received from the lord with god all things are possible and to whosoever believes so you see this faith thing cuts across it's not only about other things when it comes to your relationship god is there for you and if you only trust if you only allow him to show himself as your provider as your father he will show himself strong on your behalf he will he will do that so all these saying okay um i read it from so so magazine one of these worldly magazine and they give you their ideas oh to really make sure that that guy stays with you see you have to kiss him you have to do this you have to do french you have to do uk kiss you have to do french kiss you have to do all kinds of kissing where are you going are you sure what you're doing paul said something he said if you ask me i would tell that a man should not even touch a woman if you ask me but if you ask me i will tell you only touch a woman after you have gotten married to her don't stare her up because 
that is no guarantee you the many people multiply thousands of people have done that and at the end they don't get married so why do you think that is the way to go and then one person may be feeling happy that he has done that to the other person and the other person is feeling bad feeling used feeling abused feeling guilty feeling sad so the question is who is kissing you is that person are you married to the person and what kind of kiss is it just a greeting kiss because bible said in they say greet each other with a holy kiss there's there's a kiss that is holy no no ulterior motive not is that one that is meant to set you up for sexual intimacy who is kissing you if you are not married and you are behaving as though you are married you are hurting yourself and of course many people say and when when we get married i will change him or i will change her lie it doesn't work that way who told you people change like that people change when they are ready to change they change because they have found something better than what they have been having and so they make up their mind okay i need to let go this thing is not worth it and so they go for something better people change when they have encounter in their life or have had experience that jolts them and so they said no if i continue this way I, I i will lose my life or something will go wrong so they change Ch change doesn't come from outside you're talking about people's doing transformation it doesn't come from outside it comes from the inside it opens like somebody was described it's a door that opens from within so how did you ever acquire that ability even as a pastor i can't change anybody i can only share i can do it. and the person will listen and make up his or her mind god told me that many years ago as a pastor it's not your business to change people your business is to share with them what i have given you for them and they make the choice now if that's how god was was doing he would have forced everybody to love him obey him he would force everybody so you cannot think of changing the person how will you do it how will you do it and to start with anything i have come to understand that every woman is not looking for the same thing from a man and every man is not looking for the same thing from a woman. There are women who are comfortable financially, but they need a companion. They do not need um, a man who provides everything. They do not want to be a housewife. They are women who are professionals and they are good at what they do. They are outstanding. In fact, there are some women who make more money today than men. So for that kind of a woman, there's got to be that understanding of who she is, where she's coming from, where she's going. How will you be able as a man to live with her, not just putting up with her, not because of what she has, because eventually it will show, it will show so that kiss that you are reducing to be just anything and you can kiss anybody and just treat it casually the day you will tell them that you have changed they will find it difficult to believe why you are the one that poured rain in your party so let's read read that bible passage again there's something I want to show you. So he said the name of this son is Reuben. And why did he give, uh, did she give the name? And very interestingly, she, the, the woman was given the name. It was the women that were giving the name to their children. So Leah, whom Bible says that God saw that Leah was not loved. So why did Jacob marry her? Because he was forced. It was an arranged thing. The, the Lebanon had said, you know, in our culture, the first girl, the first daughter has to be married before the second. So you must marry this one. So it was imposed on him. 
and the man did not love her. Now, before then, there's how he is ex exclaimed. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Verse 25. When morning came, there was Leah. There was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done? <laughs> A newly wed bride, hearing how the man sounds so disappointed. This is not who I wanted. So every man, my advice is don't get drunk. I mean, don't choose a woman to be your wife when you are drunk. Don't, all those kissing and, and feeling like you are, you are in heaven. You are not in heaven. You are far from it. Far from where heaven is. In fact, you are on your way into trouble. So when the man, all the effect of alcohol faded away, See what he see how he reacted. What is this you have done to me? <laughs> I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? So the man felt deceived. Felt deceived. Mm. And so when he finally moved in, and my advice to young ladies is that a man has kissed you, slept with you is not enough reasons for you to conclude i must marry him see you need to be sure that the man loves you if not you will feel like Leah felt it does not matter the number of children as you read on you discover that she gave birth to most of the children that jacob had but that did not win the love of jacob some people i don't know for what reason women believe if i've given birth and you know my children i am the one that gives birth to his children he will love me it does not work that way it does not work that way if the purpose was the, okay so that we will fulfill our tradition you must marry the first okay since you say so and he was ready to do all that because of the one he truly loved does this man that is kissing you now does he truly love you? The woman that is kissing you now, does she truly love you? These are questions that we need to answer for ourselves. Hear her testimony. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben. For she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. So she was actually miserable in the relationship. We can say that. Surely my husband will love me now. Lie. He doesn't worry about it. Verse 33. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, Because the Lord heard that I am not loved. The first one is that the Lord sees that I am not loved. Now, God has heard. I've lamented enough. <laughs> he gave me this one too. Oh, God. Sorry, woman. So she named him Simeon, meaning God has seen. But what was God seeing? That she was not loved. God was seeing, God saw, God heard about her misery. Now God is seeing about her misery. So again, in verse, in verse 34, again she conceived. And when she gave birth to a son, now, you know, a woman at least will have some some month no, doesn't matter how fertile she is there will be some months gap so even if she was given birth every year so she was just waiting for when she will take in again when the man will sleep the man will sleep with her his heart was not there i can imagine he will be sleeping with her but his mind is with rachel because he did not love her who is kissing your lips now who is kissing you who is giving you that intimate kiss are you sure of what you are doing are you sure what you're doing <laughs> oh praise god praise god so god just opened the woman's womb and said okay uh, let this be as a consolation but from every indication that did not console her that did not comfort her because i can imagine she would actually expect a man whom she does not only give birth 
to his children but a man that truly loves her not using her as as a um you know a, a, a baby factory so she got conceived again and then she gave birth to a son and said now at last my husband will become attached to me it doesn't work that way because i have born him three sons a man does i don't know a man that responds like this to a woman i do not know and if her own was because her culture the father forced her into that and you have a freedom today to allow god to guide you help you but you refuse to receive that help whom will you blame i know i know many people say oh marriage is not is not compulsory so leave this thing alone then it's not compulsory but do you truly want a man who just comes sleep with you and walk away maybe you have children for him and he doesn't care about you wouldn't you want something better if you do want something better there's a very simple thing you do you bring yourself under the lordship of jesus christ i found that to be the solution to even husband and wife problem bringing yourself under the lordship of jesus christ so even if as a man maybe i get upset or my wife does something and, and i'm so unhappy eventually you know what i'm going to look at how is god seeing this because it matters to me how god sees the way i live that is who i submit to who i pledge my allegiance to that is my lord and my god i'm bothered i mean, i care about what he thinks about what i do with my wife and of course bible has said in the book of ephesians he said if you're thinking about marriage it is about christ and the church so my question will be to myself how would christ treat his wife he wouldn't punch her so i can't all right he will not punch my, his wife you see as as difficult as church has been christ has not has not thrown the wife away has not thrown his wife away people have brought all kinds of confusion into the church but that is the wife to christ he treats her with respect in spite of her he loves her and that's why he keeps sending the word washing the church with the word and bible says he does that so that he can remove the dirt so he can remove all the blemishes why god speaks keeps speaking to us today is that christ sends the word to his own wife so that it will be a pure and blameless wife without spot and no wrinkle that age won't even tell on the church in spite of what she is going through in spite of the trouble that church has had that age will not show on her how beautiful is that so when you reduce your wife to a non-entity you reduce your wife to a nobody make her feel so emotionally low she has no self-esteem and you feel like you're a man there's something fundamentally missing the question who is kissing you now who is that that is kissing you mm. so the psychologists will want us to believe that the number one problem in marriage is um communication it's not true i disagree number one problem in marriage according to the bible is that christ is not the center and how does this express itself because christ is not the center people do what they want to do that will not even help them they live a reactive life they do not do the things that they should do if they were living in the spirit bible says walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh the desires of the flesh but you see people ignore that and do things their own way 
And when it's time to communicate, because they read the problem is communication, guess what they are communicating? They are communicating their bitterness. They are communicating their anger. They are communicating themselves. The, the person that was pretending and was doing all he was doing, have you ever watched the, the birds? Some of these birds, in, in, even in the in villages, watch some of the documentaries and see how the male ones will be dancing for the female. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as as soon as they met you see that they will calm down they, they reduce their level of dance the amount of dance for the female <laughs> have you noticed that men do it too so it will take a man that genuinely practices the presence of god a man who loves god and he will share that love he has for God and the respect, the reverence for God. You don't know what I do in my house with my wife. But you know what? I feel I reverence God. I reverence God. And anything I know will inflict pain on my wife. I can't do it. No, I can't do it. Why? I want, to, I want God to be pleased in my marriage. So it's not about... ah. He's so macho, he's so these, he has presence. Whom are you marrying? Who is kissing your lips? Who? Who is kissing you? Well, this is, I believe that God wants to use this to help somebody. And have you thought about the fact that every child deserves a right to be born into the home of husband and wife? and and be given love given given care by both parents as much as possible oh yes i know there are some people who will say i i have done it as a single mom see it's not the same it's not the same you know and of course don't let it be like that belong to a, a home church where there is a a male figure that speaks into the life of your children because it's important that the society has gone crazy does not mean that God has not made provision for that to be corrected. So don't let it be all because you want to prove I'm right. No. Just allow those children or your child to experience. Have a bit of it. I lost my father before I was 13. Now, the fact that I even know, I knew that I had a father and I saw him up to about 12 years of age. Helped me to some extent. But you know, after a while, I noticed that as intelligent as God had made me to be, I used to suffer from uh, some kind of funny, funny things. Sometimes I'll just go absent-minded. At such time, I needed my father to be speaking into my life. I needed my father. My mother did her best. She loved me. She loved us, but she couldn't be a father to me. She couldn't. I respect my mother. She did so much for us. And I happened to be the last born, so I can tell you she did a lot, but she could not be a father to me. I hope this is making sense. Who is kissing you? Now, this could be asked to a man, could be asked to a woman. If you're a man and a girl doesn't want to bother about where you are going or where you are coming from and just wants the kisses or she's the one that is the aggressor, she kisses you whether you give permission or not. Of course, how can she kiss you without your permission? You give the permission. And then maybe you want to complain about what you permit. It happened both ways. Now, let us hear this. You are so powerful that it will take a man beating you into pulp for a man to force you to sleep with you. Why? The, the muzzle of the thigh, or the thighs, are the toughest in all of human body. So for a man to be able to have access into your privates, you have agreed you have agreed except you're a child and he forces you but if you're an adult no man comes in there without your permission no man 
and you 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 need to think about not just the momentary pleasure think about destiny think about the upcoming generation think about what will come out of that relationship think about it think about you fulfilling your purpose think about destiny where is this man going where is this woman going i want to repeat before i read again from that genesis 29 the person that genuine you have come to believe this person loves me has more influence on you than the person that you love person you love doesn't influence you like the person who loves you i don't care maybe younger maybe older but the moment you become aware that somebody truly loves you you know that now influences you in many ways it influences you in so many ways it motivates you it drives you without you thinking why there is the side of us the one of the innermost needs of man is to have that awareness that somebody truly cares about you and when we find that or we think we found that it now runs our life to some extent and it's like that it is like that okay let's let's look again and see what what became of this young woman so in um verse 35 of genesis chapter 29 she conceived again i mean she was just having a gallow of you know it was a real jamboree of childbirth she conceived again and when she gave birth to a son she said this time i will praise the lord <laughs> she should still go ahead and praise the lord and do it as a sacrifice because it, that's not going to do much I will praise the Lord. She named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. You see, even then that still didn't change. Jacob to love her like he loved Rachel. Now, verse th chapter 30, verse 1. When Rachel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister. So she said to Jacob, give me children or I'll die. Mm. I know, I know, I know. I can only imagine how that would feel. Jacob became angry with her and said, you see, the point we should note there is, don't expect for any man to do for you in a relationship what only God can do for you. Jacob had to ask a very straight question jacob became angry and said am i in the place of god so if you want to use contemporary english you say am i god at least that's how nigerians say it am i am i god <laughs> who has kept you from having children well that was a mistake because god doesn't keep but you see god just made sure that nothing stopped Leah from having children then she said here is Bela, my servant. Sleep with her so that she can bear children for me. And I too. Did you see that? See the motivation? See the spirit? I too can build a family through her. So that I too. So that I can have a child. Or I can raise a family. Was good enough. But the jealousy was the motivation i can't i can't imagine how two sisters will be wives to one man it was it, the man was in real trouble that's the one where our people will say he was in soup he was in okra soup <laughs> <laughs> oh god that was i mean he must have been a very miserable man verse 3 of chapter 30 then she said okay we've read that already Verse 4, so she gave him her servant Bila as a wife. Jacob slept with her 
men don't have that problem give them free sex they take it doesn't mean they are connected to you in any way they are not connected to you emotionally and she became pregnant and bore him a son then rachel said god has vindicated me he has listed me to my uh, listen to my plea and given me a son because these she named because of this she named him dan <laughs> oh god so rachel's servant conceived again and the story went on and went on and went and you will discover because in all of this in spite of the fact that leah was giving birth to the children much more than anybody else nothing changed as per the man's heart towards her so that somebody kisses you does not mean that you are loved. That, so, that a man or a woman sleeps with you does not mean that there is any many major thing that he's doing. You, are, you may end up just hurting yourself. Just be sure that God is in it and give God that honor. Honor your families. Honor God. Honor your families. Honor yourself. And allow nothing to temper with your destiny. However, if you have already blundered, you've made the mistakes, now, God is not interested in condemning you. He's not interested in condemning you. In the days of ignorance, you overlooked. But now he commands. Maybe somebody had told you at the beginning, oh, you are the most beautiful thing I've seen on planet Earth. And you, you don't know what, what he really wants is just to sleep with you. After I slept with you, that's it. Oh, it's the other way around. She said, oh, you are the only, only to come into your life and be a torturer. Ask God for help. Ask God for help. We live in a world that is so sexualized and overly charged with sexual mentality. You know? And um, I, want, I, I just want us to take these things to heart. Um, if you deem it from the beginning, make out time and listen to this again. But I, I want to believe that this will help somebody out there. This is one of the mentoring sessions that we have. But I want to say to our ladies, a man, whether he's an African or he's a, the, an American or British, whatever, I do not believe a man would genuinely love you from his heart just because you give birth to the children. No. He, should, he will only love you because he has decided to love you amongst all. All right? He will love you because he wants to love you, not because you have given birth to children. And that is where the God factor is so important. You need to make, make sure that the God factor is there from the onset and don't believe that lie that god will not give you what is best for you. god knows you he knows your temperament he knows what you can stand he knows he knows what will make you miserable leah didn't have a chance to 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 ask god like you have leah was compelled by the father he said you must marry this man whether you like it or not before your sister is married you must marry this man and pushed her into that misery she was living a miserable life, even though she had children. So what do you want? Would you allow God to be the Lord of your life? And if you're already married and things are not the way it ought to be, we can take it to God in prayer. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Father God, I pray for your people. Lord, you've helped us. You helped us. Even when we didn't know what was really happening, we didn't know how to choose, but you helped us. You've helped my wife and I, even before we started off, and even much more now. Help your people. And as many as turn to you for your lordship over their lives, Father, as they confess their sins, forgive them take them as your own lord for those who have felt the heat of bad relationships who have been miserable who wish it never happened the way it is as they turn to you lord show them the way 
make a way out of no way lord comfort those who are hurting heal them heal them spirit soul and body heal them emotionally let your people receive your fatherly touch father we ask that you will help your people and for those who genuinely want the solution may they receive it of you those whose heart has been broken and it's affecting everything they do broken life lord let these ones be healed so that whatever they do will prosper indeed thank you father for hearing and lord bless everyone that has joined to be part of this program bless them bless them going out bless them coming in bless them at home bless them abroad wherever they are lord let them stand out cause them to shine like the star of heaven we give you thanks lord in jesus name we pray amen let me request that you visit our website amazing grace www.amazinggracefamily.org and um, you will see a video there introducing our work well below it is where to subscribe the subscribe button please click it and that allows whatever video that we put up on the youtube to come to you but more than that if what we are offering here is a blessing please share it with friends and if you have the wherewithal to support what we are doing gladly do so by all means stop don't stop and i want you to be part of what we are doing if this is a blessing to you and you can do it doesn't matter any part of the world you are wherever you are you have a paypal button on our website to make donation anything you want to anything you feel led to and we have in the next five years to reach out to at least one million one million people effectively and we ask you to be a part of that let god bless you even as you respond to the leading of the spirit and i must thank you for creating time to join us and stay with me till now thank you ever so much and god bless you all the wonderful people i am seeing here god bless you i've seen mr john Ibu, my brother uh come for success it looks like you missed quite a lot of this watch the video and uh, you will be mightily blessed I've seen Apostle Omar and Dianabasi, Daniel. Apostle, thank you for joining me and my beloved brother and the friend, uh, Barrister Essien Ebenyong. God bless you so much for joining. And uh, you've been uh, quite an encouragement. Rona Ben Stoll, thank you. Mary Staple, glad to have you here. And uh, my pastor, Joe Kurian, thank you, sir and uh, reverend dr anekan thank you esther ibanga thank you ever so much thank you for joining us and the rest of the people i always call them the nicodemuses woman of god enobong esenam thank you for joining us uh, it's wonderful you are such an encouragement i can tell you that thank you ever so much i saw i saw Anne. i i I saw somebody here. Um, oh, man of God, Reverend Allen. Thank you so much, sir, for joining. Um, Adebanke Adebayo. Bless your dear heart. Anna Sukwo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So God bless you. Please feel free to share this on your wall. Let it bless others if it has blessed you um whatever you have observed you want to make a point a correction or you want to leave a comment to encourage others to listen to this please do that gladly but if you want to um share something or something you want us to look at you can inbox me and uh, we'll see what we can do from there 
The Lord bless you and keep you, cause the light of his countenance to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Amen.